here to talk about more details. Hey guys. <coughs> We're here to talk about more details um, of the uh, Mi 4i and also to show you not only the outside but the inside of the device, um, which is something that I'm personally very, very proud of uh, on behalf of our team. So that, I mean, the one thing that I wanted to talk about first and foremost is, um, is actually how compact the device is. And this is actually pretty extraordinary. Uh, do you guys know the Nexus 5? Who knows the Nexus 5? Yeah? Yes. So the Nexus 5 is, is launched now almost two years ago. The Nexus 5 is a device that everybody loves because it's very compact. Right? It's, it's a five inch device, but it has a very, very small body. So we wanted to take that same concept to a new level. We wanted to build a device that was as comfortable to hold as Nexus 5, but that was actually even thinner and have a much, much bigger battery than the Nexus 5. Um, do I, should we do translations or are we stay in English? So, um, and, and the only way, the only way we, we could achieve a device that is 130 grams, right, which is like I said, comparable to the iPhone 6, which is 129, um, and it's so thin, it's less than 8 millimeters, is through a lot of engineering breakthroughs. And the only way to show that is to actually show it inside. So, I've got my tools here, uh, so I'm actually going to uh, do a live uh, teardown for you guys. Um, Right here. First of all, I should turn it off. So you can see it works, okay? It works. So we're gonna turn it off. Power off. And turn it down. Straight. So this is not something that everyone should do at home, but you guys are more than welcome to tear to tear downs of your devices. Just make sure you do the review before you do the teardown in case you're not able to put it back together for some reason. So this is going to take a little bit of time because I have to take every single one of the screws out. Uh, yeah, do your thing. Uh, okay, so, uh, we're going to do第一个想强调就是我们全部用的那个材料我们现在要拆开来这一块我们可以把那个电池再弄得更薄我们在里面我们一拆开来的时候你以为看到就是其实里面是非常整齐就包括那个线那个螺丝全部这些东西都做得非常好所以怎么说就是如果你从外壳只看手机的话可能会感觉大部分手机也看起来差不多一样就是都
And of course, more screws cost more money. It also it takes longer to make the device. It takes longer to open it if you have to service it. But that's important. Uh, so this is the top motherboard. PCB. This is the bottom PCB. So the first challenge that we had here uh, when building this device um, was making sure that we made as much room as possible for the battery. And in order to do that, we had to build a very, very compact uh, PCB or motherboard. Um, so this is actually the smallest motherboard that we've ever built. I'm actually going to show you what this looks like. This is a So this is um, the E4i motherboard. Right. It's <laughs> and it's an incredibly, incredibly uh, compact and dense motherboard. Uh, so we can both sides of it. Uh, and it's actually considerably smaller uh, than even the Mi Note motherboard. If you look at the Mi Note, this is Mi Note, this is Mi Note uh, side by side. Tell the difference. Uh, we actually managed to build an even smaller motherboard uh, yeah. for me for I. Uh, we did for you know, uh, This is the other side of the video. Shit. <laughs> Didn't work? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of detail here, and this actually takes, takes a considerable amount of time. It's a considerable part of the design process um, to make to build something that's so small. But the result is that we were then able to reduce the amount of space that's occupied by the motherboard so that we could have more room um, for the battery. Um, and then if you compare, for example, with the Yeah, so this is the... Um, this is the Mi 4 PCB, and you have compare it with the Mi 4 iPCB. You can see that there's room for two uh, SIM cards here, which actually takes a huge amount of space in the motherboard. Right? Uh, so if you were to compare, if you were to, for example, put an SD slot here, uh, to speak to the question that Ghostbusters meant, yes, you asked earlier, right? If you were to, in addition to adding an SD, uh, a SIM card slot, you had to add another one for SD, you'd have to make the motherboard bigger. Right? Or lose one SIM card slot, which we did not want to do. Um, it makes a big difference. Uh, then, uh, speaking about the uh, some other components here. So, we really wanted, like I said, the inside of the device to look really beautiful. So, we decided to use these fast attach connectors from the motherboard. So these are quick release ones, so that they, yeah, they can all plug and unplug very easily. Uh, this one is for the battery, so I unplugged it and then removed the battery. Yeah. Um, so I'll take the battery out. Um, and then another thing that you can see right away here is that we have obviously two parts of the motherboard. We have the main one and the secondary PCB. Uh, some uh, smartphone designers actually put everything together in one motherboard and they push the battery down. Mm -hmm. That means you end up with a USB port on the top of the device, which is not nice. Uh, it also means that you end up with the speaker on the bottom, of, on the top of the device, which is also not nice because you want to hold a phone and if there's a speaker in the back, basically it has to be on the bottom so it basically bounces off your hand and you can hear it. If the speaker on the top, the sound will just kind of go that way. Right, so it's very important um, for the speaker to be on the bottom part of the device. Therefore, you need a secondary PCB. Uh, when you make a secondary PCB, you're, of course, spending more money because you have to, to break this uh, separate circuit board. But then you need this connector wires, right? And these are actually very high-quality wires um, with the big release connectors. And you can see um, you know, how detailed they are. So these two wires, which attach the bottom and 
laptop PCBs are themselves probably about one to two dollars. Right? So these are not cheap wires. Um, normally, you would actually see these component components just sold. Or we use quick uh, release connectors and everything. Um, so another thing that I want to mention is actually the display. So I actually have a display which I've taken from a different device. And what I'm holding in my hand here is actually the full display. Right? So this includes the glass with the integrated touch panel. It also includes the LCD and the backlight. So basically everything on something that is almost as thin as a credit card. It's a bit thicker than a credit card. It's 1.7 millimeters. But this is the entire display right here. And it's actually kind of amazing that the display uh, can be so thin and yet so you know, scratch resistant, so um, you know, shatter resistant. So this is the display. And the amazing thing is that when you put the display on top of the battery, basically this defines the height of your mobile phone. Right? You can see that. Right? It's just, I just, all I did was I put the display on top of the battery. And that's the height of the phone. So that tells you how important it is to focus as much attention as possible on making the battery as thin as possible. But how can you do that when you're trying to put in a battery that's well over 3,000 million pounds? So that's the whole challenge which I talked about earlier of building such a thin battery. Um, so this is uh, the world's uh, most advanced type of mobile phone or battery technology it's using that 4.4 volt 700 WHL platform um, from Samsung and Sony primarily. Um, this is the only the, the, the only device in the world today to ship with a 700 WHL battery above 3,000 milliamp hours, and it's actually only the second device ever to ship with a battery using this technology. The first one is actually right here. Samsung actually made by the same by the supplier of the battery, so I guess you understand that, right? Um, but we're talking about a product that, first of all, this battery is much larger. That's about that's a 26 or 2800. 2600 battery, right? So it's considerably larger, um, but it's using the same technology. It's very expensive. Right? This is very, very useful. It's very expensive technology. And here, you know, you're talking about a device uh, in the 6000 Taiwan dollar price range compared to, you guys know the price. So this is a very expensive, but also very advanced kind of battery that allowed us to build something properly. Um, to have a battery that's over 3100 million hours on a five inch device, right? So very, very small. Uh, next thing I want to talk about uh, is the camera. Uh, so the camera, uh, of course, you can see it right here. But I have another PCB with the camera. You can see a little bit more easily. All right, so that's the camera sensor. Uh, now, this is the same uh, patent that we used from Mino. Uh, I'll hold the in between my fingers. And we actually managed to design a smaller, shorter uh, camera housing um, because we actually figured out a way, and this is a pattern, um, to have it basically resting on the motherboard. Um, so basically, if you can see these little ears that it has, you can see the, the, those little things. Right. So those ears are part of the technology that we develop ourselves that allows the motherboard to rest the camera module to rest on the motherboard so it actually doesn't need as much padding on either side. This is the exact same um, technology that we have for the camera on the notes. <coughs> so if you compare, for example, the battery, uh, sorry, the camera on Mi Note and Mi 4i, you can see that it's the same technology. Uh, Mi Note uses a slightly different lens. It's a six element lens, um, but it's essentially the same thing. The same component supplier. You can see that the camera is flush as well. So we're using the same technique, the same patterns uh, from MeNote, uh, but actually the same components right, from MeNote uh, on, uh, on Mi4i. I have many things in my bag. <laughs> Whatever you want, I have it here. Uh, 
So now, uh, since we're talking about the camera, I actually wanted to show you some photos uh, taken with, uh, with the Mi4i camera. Um, so these are um, photos that are taken with the Mi 4i camera itself. Um, by the way, all these photos are in the media kit. Um, and you can find them easily uh, with all the exit data on them. So you can obviously see that they were legitimately taken um, with Mi 4i. This looks much better here than it does uh, on that screen. Um, it obviously allows you to see how beautiful this display is as well. So incredibly beautiful detail. This is a completely untouched photo that I actually took myself with Mi 4i a couple months ago. Uh, this was completely unintentional. I was at the Summer Palace walking around with a friend of mine, and all of a sudden I saw uh, this lady, and I said, I'm just going to take a picture. So it's a beautiful, beautiful photo. And we have several photos in your media kit that were taken by a Mi fan from Taiwan, uh, including a lot of the sunlight uh, photos. Um, some of these uh, more artistic photos also were taken. This one, for example, which is a beautiful photo that shows off the aperture, the f your aperture, so it's a short uh, depth of focus. Uh, beautiful photo. Uh, it's also taken by a Taiwan Mi fan. What we do is we just send phones to our Mi fans who will like photography and we just have them send a bunch of photos back to us. Right, so these are all in the media kit, so you can take a look at them. So these are beautiful photos. The other technology that I want to show, uh, uh, I have the, uh, the flashlight on me, so I'm just going to So this is the sunlight display technology, which you guys saw in the demo. Uh, so I have a makeshift... Uh, uh, I have a makeshift flashlight here. So um, I'm going to simulate the sunlight with my other phone here. Um, and you can see the effect. Um, you can see it for a second. Right? It's actually quite extraordinary. If you want to do a video, then just let me know. Um, right, so it's quite a dramatic difference. Uh, and of course, we're not trying to modify how images look, even though they look much better. We're just trying to make it possible for you to see them well uh, in broad sunlight. Does anybody want to take a video? Okay, let me know when you're ready. Ready? Is it too dramatic? That is. Show it over here. So that's without. Pretty big difference, and even if you, um, for example, if you're using um, one of the, uh, so if you're using, for example, um, SwiftKey, which is a, which is a keyboard that uses a dark, uh, dark colors, um, when you go out, you know, in daylight, you know, watch. makes a considerable difference. You can actually see it much better. So this is a story that Donovan told on stage today. And the idea is that it just makes a display much more visible uh, under direct sunlight. 